Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 23rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Never a good day if you have a newborn belly in struts that can lead to remote code execution. This vulnerability CVE 2018-11776 was found by SAML Security Research. They also have found a couple of the earlier vulnerabilities that, for example, led to some of these large breaches, like, for example, Equifax. Now, what helps a little bit here is that not everybody running struts is necessarily vulnerable. You have to have the always select full namespace flag set to true. This isn't done usually, but if you have the convention plugin installed for struts, then this is likely the case for your application. Secondly, your application needs to use an action that is configured without specifying a namespace according to SAML. Wildcard namespaces aren't going to solve the problem, so you will still be vulnerable in this case. Now, this typically for any actions that you specify in your struts configuration file. And if you're using the struts convention plugin, then this could also happen for namespaces specified in the Java code. Okay, so this sounds quite abstract. Let me give you a more specific example from the SAML advisory, and that's a redirect action. You configure a redirect where a user is being sent to a different URL within your Struts application. Well, in this case, you are vulnerable, again, if you're using the Struts convention plugin. The next thing you're probably going to ask is, is there proof of concept exploit out there? And yes, there is. I've seen proof of concept exploit, for example, on Reddit and such. It's very simple, actually, in particular for the redirect exploit. All you need to do is include the command that you would like to execute as part of the URL. So what should you do? Well, if you have no idea if you are using the struts conventions or if it's configured in a vulnerable way, I would recommend update. It probably will take you too long to figure out how all of your applications are configured. And if they're vulnerable, by then you're already exploited. So you're probably better off just upgrading struts and very later if the application actually was vulnerable or not. This is something that is being exploited right now, so you're probably already behind by the time that you're listening to this. This is the point where I hope that you took good notes the last time you updated struts and that you are now able to use that playbook and quickly apply these patches. Now, this is an ongoing issue, of course, with struts, and I highly doubt it's the last vulnerability that we into with struts. So I will also link uh, to a guide in how to configure struts securely to sort of limit the impact of these vulnerabilities and hopefully buy you a little bit more time to apply all the patches whenever they are released. And Google's Tavis Ormandy found a number of vulnerabilities in GhostScript that can easily be exploited. Now, the way they're usually being exploited is through tools like Image Magic. So that's really sort of what you have to watch out for here. If you're not familiar with GhostScript, GhostScript is a command line utility that allows you to process PostScript and PDF files, typically on Unix systems, but the tool itself is also available for Windows. Exploitation, as I said, is trivial, and Tavis, as part of his blog post, did publish a couple of ways how exploitation may happen. It also bypasses the DSafer sandbox option in GhostScript, so this is not going to protect you here. There is no patch available right now. The easiest thing that you can do to prevent exploitation here is to at least protect GhostScript from access via image magic. And you do this by modifying the policy.xml file for image magic by disabling the PS, EPS, PDF, and XPDF coders in the file. 
And then we got the uh, third patch to talk about. This one is for Adobe's Photoshop Creative Cloud for Windows and Mac OS. The vulnerability being addressed here can lead to code execution. Adobe does not state that this vulnerability has been exploited in the wild, but this patch is not released on the normal Adobe Patch Tuesday. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.